To balance the net ionic equation for K2CO3 plus FeNO3-3, this is potassium carbonate and iron 3 nitrate, we'll use these rules here. First thing we need to do with net ionic equations, we have to balance the molecular equation. This is the molecular equation. I can see that there are two irons here and just one here. I'm going to put a two in front of the iron, and then I have three carbonates, only one over here. So I'm going to put a three in front of the potassium carbonate. Now I have six of these potassium atoms. I'm going to put a six here. That also gives me six nitrates. I have three nitrates here times that two. That's six. This is the balanced molecular equation. If you need help, there's a link in the description on how to balance this molecular equation. Next, we write the states for each substance. So potassium compounds, very soluble, aqueous. Nitrates are very soluble as well. So anything with a nitrate is probably going to dissolve and be aqueous, another nitrate. But this iron 3 carbonate, we should really look this up to see if it's going to be soluble. So here's a solubility table. Carbonates often, when they're bonded to transition metals, aren't soluble. But let's check. Here's iron 3 and then the carbonate right here. And we go down, we see that I, insoluble. So if it's insoluble, it's not going to dissolve in water. It's going to be a solid. In fact, it'll be a precipitate. These two substances react. We form this solid, and it falls to the bottom of the test tube. So we have our states. Now we can split the strong electrolytes into their ions for the complete ionic equation. Potassium's in group 1 on the periodic table has a 1 plus charge, and the whole carbonate, 2 minus. Good one to know. So we have 3 times 2, 6 potassium atoms. I'll write aqueous and stuff at the end. Then I have 3 carbonate ions, CO3, 2 minus. The iron, we can't tell its charge just by looking at it. We have to see what it's bonded to. So the nitrate ion, that always has a 1 minus, and we have three of them. This has to be 3 plus. So I have two of these Fe3 plus ions, two iron 3 ions, plus I have three nitrates times two, total of six nitrate ions. And these are the reactants in our net ionic equation. For the products, we'll have six potassium atoms, just like the reactants, plus six nitrate ions. And then with net ionic equations, we don't split solids apart. So we're going to keep the iron three carbonate together. So this is the balanced net ionic equation for potassium carbonate plus iron three nitrate. Now we can cross the spectator ions out and we'll have our net ionic equation. So on both sides here, I see in the reactants and the products, I have six potassium ions. I also have six nitrate ions. Those can cross out as well. And this leaves the net ionic equation for K2CO3 plus FeNO3-3. I'll clean it up, write the states, we'll have our net ionic equation. And this is the balanced net ionic equation for potassium carbonate plus iron 3 nitrate. You notice charge is conserved. I have 3 times 2 minus, that's a minus 6, and then I got a plus 6. They cancel out. If you count the atoms up, each type will be the same on both sides as well, so mass is conserved. One last thing, you'll often see people put the positive ion first in the balanced net ionic equation. It doesn't matter, it's the same equation. Maybe it looks a little nicer. Either way, this is Dr. B. Thanks for watching.